What's up everyone, my name's Robbie. This is Robbie and Manila, and today we're talking about finding ETFs with Charles Schwab. So when it comes to ETFs, it can be a really important tool in anyone's portfolio. You could use one ETF for your entire portfolio. For example, if you want an ETF that just tracks the S&P 500, you could do that. Or maybe you just want parts of your portfolio to track different sectors. Maybe you want 5% of your money tracking the healthcare sector in an ETF, and another 5 tracking the financial sector in an ETF. So however your portfolio is made up and however much money you want in ETFs is up to you, but what's great about Schwab is that it has tools to help you figure it out. Because let's face it, finding an ETF, whether you're a beginner or you know what you're doing, can actually be kind of hard. I mean, there's 1,500 ETFs in the US alone. So it could almost be as hard to find an ETF as a stock to invest in. So one of the reasons I love Schwab are the tools that they have available to all investors, and in those tools are tools to help you with ETFs. So let's take a look at some of these ETF tools so we can figure out how to find ETS with Charles Schwab. Okay, before we begin, there's a few pieces of criteria that I find really important with ETFs. So the first piece of criteria is actually pretty important, and that is hitting the like button so we can satisfy the YouTube algorithm. Okay, so joking aside, these are some things that I do like to see in ETFs. First, I wanna see the assets under management of the ETF. ETFs with assets under management over 100 million make me feel comfortable, while ETFs with lower than 20 million don't make me feel that great. And ETFs with 20 to 100 million AUM I can usually deal with. Which brings me to the next point, which is volume. So when it comes to volume, I like to see volume at 50K or more over a seven to 10 day average daily volume. Now, of course, those who use ETFs are often fee conscious, so the fee is important. I like to see fees of 20 basis points, which is 0.2% or lower, but it depends on the ETF. For example, if it's an ETF that tracks the broad stock market or the S&P 500, I don't want the fee to be more than about 0.05% or five basis points. But if it's a niche ETF or a fundamental type ETF, then maybe paying a little more is okay. Maybe 20 basis points or 0.2% or less. So those are just a few things, but of course there's more like bid ask spreads and index tracking and things like that. So there's a few ways to find ETFs that check the boxes I just talked about. One way with Charles Schwab is kind of the easy way and that's by using the Charles Schwab select list. So to find the Charles Schwab select list, all you need to do is log into your account, hover over research and then click ETF select list. Now you'll see almost 100 ETFs that made the Charles Schwab ETF select list. To better understand the list, we can look at the different criteria Schwab uses. Here you'll see the four ways that they narrow down ETFs. The first is eligibility. They don't use ETFs with assets less than 20 million. So there's not gonna be any ETFs with less than 20 million on this list, kind of like what I said before. There's also no non-standard ETFs like leveraged ETFs and inverse ETFs and stuff like that. The next criteria that they narrow down by is consistency. So if an ETF has bad tracking against an index or a high bid ask spread, it's gonna weed it out as well. And then they'll go through a final analysis. So hopefully now you see the select list does weed out some ETFs that maybe you wouldn't wanna invest in. So if we go back to the list, we can see all the different ETFs that are recommended by Schwab. Now, if we wanna weed out certain ETFs and find specific ones, we can go to the screener. So here we have the screener with all the different ETFs and we can see the ETF select list right here in this call. Now, let's say we wanna find a total market ETF that's on this ETF select list. We can go to modify criteria, we can go to basic criteria, we can hit underlying index, and we can select the total market index. And now you'll see there's one ETF that matches this screen. Hit view matches, and now you'll see the ETF, which is the iShares Core S&P Total US Stock Market ETF. Ticker symbol is ITOT, and then you'll see it's on the select list, and this is the underlying index that it tracks, the S&P 500 Total Market Index. And then of course, if you wanna invest in the ETF, hit the ticker symbol, and then click trade. So that's the easy way to find ETFs because the Charles Schwab select list screens a lot of stuff out for us. But of course, we can do this on our own by going to the screener. So if we go back to research, we can hit ETF screener. And now we can add in the screens that we want. For example, I'll use the things that I stated before. I can go to basic criteria. I'll add total assets of over 100 million. I'll add the average volume for the 10 days as over 50,000. I'll add the gross expense ratio of less than 0.2. And now I have 261 ETFs. The next thing we wanna do is figure out what types of ETFs we wanna buy. Do we want an S&P 500 ETF? An ETF that tracks international? Do we want an ETF that tracks a sector? So that's what you need to find yourself, but let's assume you want to find an ETF that invests in financials. 
We can go down here to the sector exposure and we can hit financials. And we have to decide how much sector exposure we want. So if I want a pure financial ETF, I want 100% of the ETF to be in financials. So I'll go here to range, I'll click greater than or equal to 100. And now I see eight different ETFs. So I know all of those eight ETFs meet these different standards and they're all financial ETFs. So let's go ahead and take a look. So now we can see the expense ratio of all these different ETFs. And so we know that we want an ETF with less than 0.2% expense ratio. But there's one in here with an expense ratio of 0.19% TDTF. So now you can look through these eight ETFs and figure out which ETFs are gonna be best for you and your specific needs. But there's another way to do this and we could just go back and screen out all of these financials for the ETF select list of Charles Schwab. So if I go to modify criteria, I can go over here to basic criteria and I can hit ETF select list. And now I've screened down to just one ETF. So if I go to view matches, I'll see. So now I see that this is a Fidelity ETF FNCL. It's got a gross expense ratio of 0.5. 84%, which is great. It's got total assets of 739 million. The average volume is 156,000. So there you go. If I was looking for a financial sector ETF, this might be the one that I would want. So I would just click the ticker symbol and then I'd go hit trade and I'd buy the ETF. All right, so I hope this video helped you with some ideas and some ways to find ETFs with Charles Schwab. If you've got some other ways that you're trying to find ETFs, please let me know in the comments below. So thanks everyone so much for watching and please hit the like button if you like the video and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. And before you go, why don't you watch another one of my videos by clicking on the end screen coming up right now.